Hello world, Geriatric Geek here. How in the heck are you? I hope you're doing great. It's another beautiful Sunday morning here in North Las Vegas. It's the 6th of November. Glad you guys stopped by for a little bit to check out what I've picked up from Dollar Tree. That's right, Dollar Tree number three. That's it. Well, that's it for this month. I'm done. I would say I've done pretty well this month. One, two, and three. Those are all November pickups for the old geriatric geek. I have to admit, most of them were uh, going to be gifts for folks, and uh, I haven't shown you all of them, but uh, hey, I've got quite a few here I want to share with you and show you that I picked up, you know, show you what's out there. Maybe you're interested in picking up for some for yourself and for your family or friends. So that's why we're here. I appreciate y'all standing, stopping by and spending your valuable time watching uh, this, this old geek uh, talk about movies for a little bit. So, um, yeah, for, let's get start, this started. I got the old freak flag flying today. I got the sweat with the Game of Thrones t-shirt or sweatshirt on. So I'm ready. Let's do this. First one up, talking about hippies. <laughs> Speaking of hippies, taking Woodstock. That's right. Taking Woodstock, R rated 121 minutes from 2009. This was this is by the, uh, the uh, director Ang Lee, who also did Broke, ba Broke Neck, Broke Back Mountain. I can't talk right now, but uh, we'll get through this. So yeah, taking Woodstock. It's basically about Elliot, who uh, a young man that uh, back then in '69, I guess he uh, he basically was the reason, one of the reasons Woodstock actually took off because uh, he was interested in what was going on. He was trying to help his his uh, mom and pa's uh, motel out, so he was trying to get some people to come to come around the area to help the. Uh, the hotel out so I'm excited to check this out had I been a little bit older when this when Woodstock happened I probably would have gone because uh, where I live was not too far from where this happened I mean a couple hour drive we could have made it you know me and my buddies probably would have gone we talked a lot about it but uh, I was just way too young. I was a little too young at that point so anyway glad to have this one it says from Academy Award winning director Ang Lee Taking Woodstock, the comedy inspired by a true story of Elliot Tiber and his family who inadvertently played a pivotal role in making the famed Woodstock Music and Arts Festival into the happening that it was. So yeah, I'm glad to have that. Let me show you the back real quick. Looks like a fun time. We'll check it out to see what's up. Next up. I so, saw uh, Nick Nolte was in this one, and I thought, ah, this could be pretty good. It's called The Padre. The Padre, R-rated, 2018, 95 minutes. It's a crime drama. This thing gets pretty good reviews. Um, I'd never heard of it before, but uh, what's it say? Hell-bent on justice, retired U.S. Judge Randall Nims, Nick Nolte, and his hired gun, Gasper, tracked down a small-time con man posing as a priest in a small Colombian town only to be thrown off course by a scrappy 16-year-old local girl intent on reuniting with her little sister in the United States. So yeah, check that out. The Padre. Let me know down below. If you guys have seen any of these, let me know down below. If you picked them up, if what you picked up, let me know what you thought of it. Next up. A little scary something from uh, BBC. Save Our Skins from 2015, 86 minutes long. Kind of a, this gives me a kind of a Shaun of the Dead feel, I think. I uh, Actually, I started watching a little bit of it, and I haven't quite finished it yet, but uh, hopefully get back to that later on today after football. I'm a big football, pro football fan, so got to get this done and then go check out the Raiders. Probably get beat by the Jets. So, 
In this madcap melange of horror, comedy, and sci-fi, SOS Save Our Skins features two not very bright British geeks who wake up in New York City only to find that the entire human race has vanished. At first, Ben and Stephen relish having everything all to themselves, but yikes, they're not alone after all. Mysterious aliens and ravenous monsters threaten their long-term health and an SOS message on the internet gets no reply. SOS, save our skins. Let me know if you've seen it. Next up, a little Andy McDowell in this one. Breaking at the Edge. Breaking at the Edge. 83 minutes from 2015. This thing also gets pretty good reviews. I haven't watched this one yet. Um... I do like Andy McDowell. He's got Milo Ventimiglia also. So during her pregnancy, a young woman develops a sixth sense, which enables her to see into a spiritual world that could threaten the welfare of herself and her baby. Hmm. All righty. Here's the back. It's fun to me. There we go. Breaking at the Edge. I like those psychological, looks like a psychological kind of uh, thriller. Next, the one that started it all. I picked this up for a friend, but The Conjuring. R-rated, 112 minutes, 2013. Of course, the Warrens are, you know, world famous. This is based on the true case files of the Warrens. They're basically modern-day Ghostbusters. I showed The Conjuring 2 in my last video, so uh, I was glad to be able to find this and put this together so my friend would have both copies. It's R-rated, 112 minutes from 2013. The one that started it all, right there. I, love, I like that. Love, like that movie, yeah. And, all right, Planet Earth Volume 2. I like to pick these up. My wife and I like to check these out. There's some beautiful, beautiful uh, photography and camera work here. This is 150 minutes long. This is from 2008. This one contains episodes of Caves, Deserts, and Ice Worlds. This is also from BBC. And next, something from my friend again. Yeah. Both the A Nightmare on Elm Street and A Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Of course, Nightmare on Elm Street is uh, R-rated 1984. Freddy Krueger at his best. <clears throat> of all the slasher guys, Freddy's probably my least favorite, but uh, I do, you know, I, I like the movies. So I picked this up for my, my buddy. Freddy Krueger. Just don't go to sleep. You know? <laughs> Next up, a little Jack Little. Very little, I take it. Uh, it's from what I've heard. Jackie Chan and Kung Fu Master. Kung Fu Master, 85 minutes, 2009. This uh, is also known by the name of Looking for Jackie. And the truth is, uh, from what I understand, I haven't watched it, um, Jackie is, eh, I want to say, he's only in this couple scenes, <laughs> but it's, it's basically a ripoff of the Karate Kid, I think. It's a young man coming of age flick, so... I thought I'd check it out. Jackie Chan is undefeated kung fu master who dishes out the action in traditional Jackie Chan style. When a young boy sets out to learn how to fight from the master himself, he he not only witnesses some spectacular fights, but learns some important life lessons along the way. Where have we heard that before? But I do like Jackie Chan. Next up, this looked like fun to me. It has Luke Perry in it. Amber Benson. The Griddle House, not rated, 87 minutes long, 2018. It's a drama. It's pretty good reviews. Just like It looks like a feel-good movie kind of thing. 
Teenager Jack Benson, adopted when he was a young child, is on the hunt for his birth mother. After an argument with his real folks, Jack discovers a note written by a birth mother and learns that she's a regular at the nearby Griddle House. Armed with a list of questions and determined to find the woman who birthed him, he sets out and encounters a diner full of wacky and wonderful people and ultimately discovers himself in the process. Something me and my wife can sit and watch, I think. Like I said before, she don't like the scary stuff, so I have to pick up stuff every once in a while so we can watch the movies together. Now this just looked crazy. I'm sure this is a worthy successor to Shaun of the Dead. I doubt it. But uh, called Stalled. Stalled. 84 minutes, 2013. Not rated. It's comedy horror. It's pretty good reviews. A little zombie film. It's Christmas Eve and the soon-to-be fired janitor is nearing the end of his shift. His work in the women's restroom is interrupted by two drunken partiers and he finds himself trapped in a stall. Just as the girls are about to make out in a flash, one of one of them turns into a zombie and launches at the other girl, tearing her apart. Hmm. Okay, we'll check it out. It's pretty good reviews for a cheap old zombie movie. I, I got to get all my zombie stuff. I love zombies. Zombie movies, I guess, I should say. Oh, uh, let's see. Stalled. Intruders. Let's go with Intruders. R-rated, 90 minutes from 2015. So-so reviews. Kind of a home invasion thing, but it was done in Louisiana, so that's why I picked it up. I like, like I said before, anything in Louisiana becomes immediately atmospheric, and if it's atmospheric, I like it. Anna suffers from agoraphobia, so crippling that when a trio of criminals break into her house, she cannot bring herself to flee. But what the intruders don't realize is that agoraphobia is not her only psychosis. Mm. We'll see. We shall see. This thing looked crazy. Dying has never been so sweet. Candyland, 85 minutes, 2015, non-rated. It's looked crazy because, yeah, it has a crazy person in it. Gary Boosie. Gary Boosie. It's pretty good reviews. It's a psychological thriller. I watched the trailer, and it looked really weird, so I picked it up. Yeah, Candyland. New lovebirds, Peter and Tess, find solace in each other's brokenness. They decide to isolate themselves from the world inside Peter's apartment, creating their own reality, Candyland. But their possessive love descends into a surreal savagery. Hmm. Weird. I mean... Uh, I can't wait to check this out. It just look, I mean, Gary Boosie and yeah. So hey, I I got this one uh, previous Dollar Tree thing and thought uh, when my cousin asked, hey, if you see another one, get it for me. So I did. Lake Fear three, seventy nine minutes from two thousand eighteen. So my cousin has both one and two. She didn't have three, so here it is. Demonic evil is unleashed following a man named Remington, who recently escaped its deadly clutches. Trying to evade this relentless demon, Remington hides out in a bar with two women in search of a missing person and a failing host of a paranormal-themed TV show. It becomes a battle for survival as the evil spirit releases its wrath. Lake Fear 3. Let me know if you guys liked Lake Fear down below. Oh, here comes something that looks like it's going to be fun. She's the toughest girl you will never see. Invisible Sue, 95 minutes from 2018. It's an adventure fantasy film. It's pretty good reviews. About this little girl, 12-year-old girl, who 
who finds a way to become, well, I guess her mother's a scientist and she somehow become or her mother dies or is killed. I can't remember what the story was. Let's see. In order to surprise, she actually gets exposed to the secret chemical that mother had been developing and gets the power of invisibility. That's probably was when I was a kid. That's what I always wanted. Want, that's the power I always wanted. Invisibility. Let me know if you guys have seen this, what you thought of it. Let me read, let you read the back. This looks like fun. Looks like fun. Next up, a film by Dave McKean, Bewitching and Highly Evocative, Fantasy, Reality, and the In-Between, in Luna, 106 minutes long, 2014. Gets pretty good reviews. This is from the BBC also, I do believe. Yes, it is. Grant. Gorgeous animation, it says. Grant and Christine are still struggling with a storm of grief following the death of their baby. They visit an old friend with his new girlfriend in an isolated house. Don't do it. By the sea. Dean tries but fails to control his drinking. Freya worries about the age difference between her and Dean. Christine confesses her secrets to Dean, upsetting his comfortable world of escapist fantasy and children's books. Once over a long weekend, old loves, losses, and resentments are revisited, and life of the dead child is lived out in a series of strange dreams. We shall see. Look pretty good to me. Let me know down below if you like that one. You've seen it. Mythical creatures brought to life in Beast Legends. 150 minutes, 2010. This is all from, also from B, BBC. They're the stuff of legend, hidden creatures unknown to science and confined only to the imagination until now. Griffins, wild men, and dragons. We've all heard stories about these strange and un unidentifiable creatures. Now, using a powerful combination of eyewitness accounts, scientific fact, and CGI, these animals are brought to life by credible and expert investigators in a series that journeys to the very frontiers of knowledge. CGI recreations are constructed from first-hand accounts and physical evidence to reveal living, breathing creatures with flesh and blood. Taking these beasts from the world of imagination and nightmares into an all-too-real existence. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Maybe a little behind the scenes. How the, I don't know. We'll see. Next up. Pick this up because... I didn't have it, and I, I've never seen it. And I thought, well, the wife and I can watch this, maybe. Chips. R-rated, 101 minutes. John Baker and Frank Poncherella have joined the California Highway Patrol for very different reasons. Baker, the rookie, is a beaten-up pro motorbiker. Beaten-up pro motorbiker trying to save his marriage. Punch. A tough cop with a weakness for women in yoga pants is an undercover FBI agent investigating heists that may be inside jobs. Hmm. I know a lot of people have seen this. I've never seen it. So let me know down below if you liked it. Next up, Josh Duhamel. Josh, two Joshes, Josh Wiggins. How far will one man go? Lost in the sun. Not rated, 2014 action thriller. It's pretty good reviews. John is a rugged, small-time crook running from a past full of mistakes and regrets. He soon crosses paths with Lewis, a newly orphaned teenage boy who becomes an unwilling accomplice on an open road adventure fueled by robberies, guns, and deception. John's Lonely outlaw lifestyle soon catches up with him, and he must confront his demons and decide if his life of doing wrong is still right for him and Lewis. I don't know. We'll check it out. We shall see. That's worth anything. 
Maybe hot trash. Who knows? All right. Based on a novel by Patricia Highsmith, author of The Talented Mr. Ripley, is A Kind of Murder. A little thriller. R-rated, 2016. Not from 95 minutes. A psychological thriller. Gets so-so uh, reviews. Maybe a good popcorn movie. Something maybe my, watch, my wife will want to watch with me. We'll see. So Patrick Wilson and Jessica Biel star in this Hitchcockian noir based on a novel by Pat, Patricia Highsmith. It's 1960 in, the Manhattan and, in Manhattan, and Walter seems to have it all, status, money, and a happy marriage. But he has become obsessed with Marty Kimmel, a man suspected of killing his wife. This brutal murder unlocks Walter's darkest fantasies. His desire to be free from his own wife, the beautiful but damaged Clara, when he is found dead and when she is found dead in suspicious circumstances, the lines blur between innocence and intent. Hmm. hmm. Let me know if you've seen it. And let's see. Voice from the Stone. Silence is calling. Amelia Clark and Morton Sakas. Morton? Martin. There you go. I'm going to tell you, anything with Amelia Stone in it from Game of Thrones. Got my Game of Thrones t-shirt on, I mean, shirt on, like I said. Voice of From the Stone. R-rated, 90 minutes, 2016. Of course, Amelia was Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones. I can't say enough about Game of Thrones. If you guys liked it, let me know down below. I'm a big fan haunting thriller set in an isolated castle in 1950s Tuscany. Voice from the Stone tells the story of Verena, a determined young nurse who is hired to help the mute young heir within. But the more she observes him, the more Verena becomes convinced he has fallen under the spell of a powerful and otherworldly persona trapped in the villa's stone walls, one that seems to be rapidly entwining with her own. Let me know if you guys have seen that one. Can't wait to check that one out. All right. Next up, Collider. Non, not rated, 85 minutes from 2018. It's an action sci-fi thing. It's middle of the road reviews. Looks like a time travel uh, flick. Maya, a headstrong 17 year old girl uh, lives in a hidden orphanage run by a secret organization called CID. When Maya is mysteriously attacked one night, she realizes that there may be more than, to her story and CID could be involved. She confides in a scientist named John, who is her mentor and only friend. Together, they use a makeshift time machine to send Maya back in time to find her parents and uncover the truth about her past. All right. I do like time travel movies, so I'd check this one out. We'll see whether it's worth the shelf. Let me know if you've seen that one. An excellent day for an exorcism. This is from the producers. The producer? I can't read that. Anyway, from uh, called Exeter. Exeter. R rated 91 minutes, 2015. Good reviews. Lots of blood and gore effects in this, I understand, so be right up my alley. Exeter. A little exorcism going on. I do like my exorcism movies. And we got Jennifer Lopez and Viola Davis in Lilla and Eve. Lilla and Eve. R-rated, 94 minutes, 2015. I picked it up because it looks like a revenge flick. Lilla, a grieving mother whose son was killed in a drive-by shooting, attends a support group where she meets Eve, who has also lost her daughter to street violence. When the police prove incapable of bringing those responsible to justice, Lilla and Eve team up as vigilantes and take matters into their own hands. Can't wait to see Jennifer Lopez getting revenge. <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm. The zombie apocalypse is here. Extinction. R-rated 115 minutes from 2010. 
a virus designed as a tool in gene technology, hmm. goes out of control and infects 90% of the population, leading to uncontrollable mutations. These zombie-like humans seem intent on bringing an end to the few remaining uninfected humans on the planet. The few survivors must band together to survive against the horde and find a cure before time runs out. Get that cure. Take the vaccine. I picked this up for one of my buddies. Old uh, punk nerd. He's into this kind of stuff. Steven Tyler. I like Steven Tyler, but uh, this is non-rated. 91 minutes, 2018. An intimate portrait of rock icon Steven Tyler as he embraces the challenges of shifting gears, both as a solo performer and in new genre of music. Uncovering a side of Tyler many fans have never seen before, this inspiring story looks at the passion, drive, and search for creative fulfillment that keeps artists pushing boundaries throughout their careers. Sounds interesting. I'm sure old punk nerd will enjoy that. It lurks in the darkness. I don't know why I got this. It's probably hot trash, but uh, I got it. Iron Wolf. I, I've seen this under another title, I think. Not rated, 93 minutes, 2013. Gets terrible reviews, I found out when I got it home. <clears throat> Probably hot trash, but we'll see. Through a series of cruel experiments, they create a new secret weapon that's both bloodthirsty and unstoppable, but when a Russian attack destroys the lab, the weapon is buried under the rubble and lost for decades. 70 years later, they let it go. Oh, no. The back you can read for yourself. We shall see. Terrible reviews, by the way. And this, only at Best Buy, except I got a Dollar Tree. <laughs> lucky Man, Stan Lee's Lucky Man. Season 1, not rated, 2016. This thing gets great reviews. Why didn't they review, renew this for a second season? Only one season of this. What would... What if you could control luck? Would that be the greatest power you could give a man or the worst nightmare? Stan Lee's Lucky Man is a bold crime thriller series based on the idea by legendary comic book writer Stan Lee about a cop and a compulsive gambler who is in danger of losing everything. Huh. So changing luck, that would be cool. That would be cool. I don't, I don't know why they didn't renew that. Evidently, everything I read about that uh, show was good. I have not watched it myself, so let me know down below if you've you enjoyed it, if you've seen it. Next up, I saw Hayden Christensen and Nicolas Cage was in this one, so eh, picked it up. Outcast, not rated, 98 minutes, 2015. This is a Chinese film. It was actually done in China, from what I understand. Know nothing about it. And the heir to an imperial, I can't read what it is, under the sticker, an assassination despised by older brother. The young prince must flee the kingdom and seek protection. His only hope for survival is a reluctant war-weary crusader named Jacob, who must overcome his own personal demons and rally the assistance of a mythical outlaw known as the White Ghost. Together they must fight side by side in this epic battle to return the prince to his original place on the throne. Yeah, a little Nick, Nick Cage action. Are you a Nicol, Nicholas Cage fan out there? Let me know. And a little MST 3000. That's right. That's right. Mystery Science Theater 3000 pre presents... Their souls are trapped between the past and the future. Undead. Undead. 92 minutes, not rated. This is put out by Shout Factory. Yeah. I'm, every once in a while I get on these MST uh, binges and uh, just, you know, hey, it's good for a good laugh, right? At least for me it is. Step into the not-too-distant future of Mystery Science Theater 3000, where all that stands between us and the cheesiest movies ever made is an intrepid crew of Satellite of Love. Yeah. 
the undead. This hypnotic horror from legendary director Roger Corman relates to the tale of a researcher named Quintus exploring the possibilities of past life regression with his nubile subject Diana, who in days of yore was condemned as a witch. Sounds like a good time to me. You guys have seen that, let me know what you thought. Now this one I've had, and so I picked it up uh, for my cousin. I saw it there. It's, I've not watched this myself, but uh, the music box, 2018, 84 minutes. It's a possession flick. When six-year-old Sophie is tragically orphaned, guardianship is assigned to her estranged aunt, Annabelle. The two move into a large, eerie Victorian house where Sophie unearths a locked wooden box with a strange symbol drawn on it. When the music box begins affecting Sophie, Sophie's behavior and health, Annabelle seeks out the aid of a child psychologist and clairvoyant who soon discover the music box possesses an evil spirit seeking to haunt Sophie and destroy Annabelle. <clears throat> I do have this in my collection, like I said. Pick that up for someone else. And this just looked like fun. Uh, you know, me and the grandkids could probably sit and watch this one called The Magic Kids. 97 minutes 20, from 2020. This just came out. Only straight to straight to this DVD. It's so so reviews. The voices evidently are dubbed, which kind of stinks. You know, you can see it's low low budget. Looks looks good. A vampire who can't see blood, a fairy who is afraid to fly, and a werewolf with a hairy out, hair allergy. Teens Vlad, Faye, and Wolf are outcasts of Penner Academy, the world's most famous magic school. The trio must work together to save the town's fairies, witches, trolls, and vampires from the mayor's black curse, black magic curse. We'll see. We shall see. And another one I picked up for my friend, Punk Nerd, Harry Potter Interactive DVD Game. This is not right. It's from 2007. I know nothing about this, but uh, I'll let you read the back real quick there. If you're interested, this is out there. I found it. Looks interesting. I remember those coming out and people, uh, kind of a clunky interface, I think, but uh, might be interesting. Let me know if you've played that. And <clears throat> Curse of the Witching Tree, Evil Never Dies. 97 minutes, not rated, 2015. Just gets so-so reviews. The Dead Never Forget. An innocent woman hanged as a witch for allegedly murdering her son curses the tree from which she is hung and all the children who play around it. As the effects of this act of revenge echo throughout the years and centuries, restless spirits haunt the house where the bodies of the cursed children have been buried. When a family moves into their new home, they begin to uncover the terrible truth behind the witching tree and the murdered children upon which they are unknowing, unknowingly sleep. All right, haven't seen this one yet, so let me know down below what you guys thought. And I picked up another one of those eight film collection action binge, binge things. With, I got one with Dolph Lundgren, Blood of Redemption. Let me show you those. So we got Storming Juno, Take Down the Genesis Code, King of Paper Chasing, Blood of Redemption, Wicked Blood, Sweeney, and The Big I Am. Show you the back in case you're interested. Ah, I see a couple of them I'd like to watch. There's one that's uh, based on true stories of D-Day, Storming Juno. I might want to watch that. So let me know if you guys have seen any of those. And last but not least is a uh, eight animated feature films, volume two. This is for the grandkids when they come by. The younger ones will probably enjoy this. Keep them busy for a few minutes. We'll see. It's got Puss in Boots, Dragon Guardians, Life a Jungle, Primates of the Seven Seas, Amazon Jack, Aqua Tales, Ivan the Incredible, and Dragon Hunters. So there you go, guys. That's the end of Dollar Tree for no, uh, November slash first part of December. Basically, these are all, I picked all these up in November. So that's it. 
You guys, thanks so much for stopping by and watching. I do appreciate it. If you like these videos, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Let's get the old geek up there to 2,000 subscribers. Why not? So, yeah. Hey, I've got a lot of things coming up. I've got a couple, um, let's see, I guess i got Loot Crate Fright to do yet. Uh, another box from uh, uh, Marvel. Yeah, I'm going to check those out for those that like uh, mystery boxes. And I've got a couple other things. Speaking of Game of Thrones, I talked about it earlier. A lot of you guys may or may not know. I don't know if I've told you or not. But I'm into collecting a little bit of everything. And one of those things is uh, trading cards. Uh, I've been collecting trading cards. I'm meaning uh, baseball, football, uh, some hockey over the years. I mean, seriously, from back when I was, you know, 10, 11. Uh, yeah. So my dad, he was he was a uh, professional, semi-professional uh, baseball player. And... Uh, you know, I, I really started collecting big when he, back then when I learned about him. He had to quit baseball because I was born. <laughs> he had to make real money, I guess. So anyway, so I picked up, I've been picking up some uh, pretty neat uh, trading card things to open up. I'm going to share these with you guys. I, I generally just open them up myself. I don't share them, but I'm going to start sharing them. I got some Game of Thrones here. This is 24 packs cool part about this is uh, it's the complete series trading cards, but also there's a, uh, there are two, I believe there's one or two autographs from one of the uh, crew in this. So can't wait to open that up. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to crack this open on my channel here soon. Um, got those, and I've got these, the Walking Dead Evolution. You can see down below, you get two hits per box, one guaranteed uh, autograph. Wouldn't it be cool if I could get uh, Rick? That would be cool. Anyway, that's what you got to look forward to from the old geriatric geek. That and my freak flag. Anyway, hey, you guys, thanks again. Indeed, uh, have a great day. Keep safe. Stay safe. Uh, we will get through all this crazy COVID stuff. I, I do believe we're going to do it. Get this vaccine out there, and maybe we can all get out there. Speaking of getting out there, I do have a, a Goodwill slash Desiree Industries uh, pickup movie coming up, or video coming up soon. Don't tell my wife, but I, I made a little trip. Anyway, hey, you guys, keep smiling. Keep having fun. Until next time, peace.